going to say, round of applause for the band. That was awesome. Who wants it again? We'll just play. We'll just have that all. Yeah, we'll just have that all Sunday, all morning, won't we? I think the band are up for it. Morning, everybody. How are we? Let's move that mic out of the way. I'm getting feedback in my own head. It is awesome to be here at the Salvos at Ingle Farm today. It is. We've had dramas all morning. And uh, the joy of that is, is that uh, you guys don't know what went on, which was really good. And um, as much as it is, I'm always amazed that uh, before we get started, it all settles down and we're all here. How good is that? I have had an absolutely wonderful week. Uh, my daughters had walked the Larapinta Trail, as I think I mentioned to you last Sunday, and then they spent most of this week with me. So Michaela's here, Sam's not, I'll be talking to him when I get home. And uh, Tia's flown back to, uh, to Perth, she landed there back yesterday, which was great. So I've had a house full of all my kids all week, it has just been amazing. I woke up and all I could hear was Madison and Tia and Michaela just chatting away and it was just, oh, it was just beautiful. Absolutely amazing week. So yeah, I'm all full of happiness on the inside, which is nice. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land in which we gather today, the Ghana people. We acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging and remind ourselves that the Salvation Army and we, as members of the Salvation Army, are committed to reconciliation at every possible opportunity. We are together and we are one. Um, I want to uh, recognise Blinda's not here today, she's not unwell, but finally she's able to fulfil her second uh, residential for Inspire that's supposed to happen in a very short time. It's now happened over the last two and a half years and she's able to go off and complete that. So she's uh, sad that she's not going to be here, but really happy that she was able to uh, head off and be part of that, which is really be looking forward to it. So today we have Major Sue. She's going to be our guest speaker today. And um, she will explain what is in front of us later on. Um, I promise you, we're not setting fire to the church. That was Pentecost. That was a few weeks ago. Um, but she will explain more as why we have this display up the front this morning. But first, I want you guys to uh, just think uh, about your Lord as I read Psalm 23 to you today for our call to worship. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all of my days, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen today that uh, we'll come to uh, some more as we continue on uh, the next couple of weeks with Heroes of the Old Testament. And uh, Sue is going to be bringing in another one of those for us today. And then uh, you'll hear from Belinda next week with another hero. And uh, it just gives us an idea to see other people in other lights in different ways as we think about our characters in the Bible and what they do for us and how God worked in their lives and how God can work in our lives as well. So we come here today for what? Good job. Well done. Tick for you. You get a sticker afterwards. I don't have any stickers, but you can have a kid's zone that's closest to a sticker. But we come here to worship, and worship for everybody looks just a little bit different. It depends on where you are, where you come from, who you think, uh, how you've been going, what the week looks like, or what your image is. Of God is. So we're going to sing, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. It's a song for us just to stop, think what we're doing, and actually sing those words. And when we say words out aloud, we then connect with them. So I invite you all to stand as we sing this song together with the band.
Heavenly Father, we stand here before you or sit wherever we are, that we come as we are. We don't come all shiny and polished. We don't come all ready and able to be with you today. We come as we are, to be in your presence from being good to being bad across all walks of life and every place. And Lord, we ask you today that you minister to us, that you show us your love as you have done every other day and will do for every other day to come. We pray this in your glorious name. Amen. Please take your seats. All right, uh, some good news. Normally somebody else would do the good news, but uh, I'm going to share with you today and from here, not down there. Um, yesterday, the uh, lovely ladies who have been happily organising the uh, high tea raised an amazing amount for the Red Shield Appeal. Does anyone want to hazard as a guess what was raised? Two grand. That's your target for next year, all right? We'll fill the whole place. $730, which is truly amazing. And uh, I know it was Sue and Jill were the main two that came and said, but it was your house, it was your thing, but there were so many people involved in making it happen. And if I say everybody, I'll probably forget someone, so I won't. But everyone who did, well done. Everyone who turned up, good job. That's just amazing. Um, I saw some of the pictures and just looked like you had so much fun. So well done and um, yeah, thank you for your efforts into that. Um, during the week, if you came in or rang up, uh, there wasn't Nat sitting on the reception. Robin was. Thank you for such an amazing uh, job you did there. It just flowed so well and it was good to have you here and yeah, she's funny. Just We laughed and giggled a lot of time. It was good. Um, but Nat and Katrina were away at something called Next Level Leadership. And um, it's to help people go to, obviously, the next level. And both Katrina and Nat graduated the Next Level Leadership Training. And um, I'm sure that uh, they'll put some of those newly learned uh, skills into action in both their roles. Um, this... Thursday, the 23rd of June at 5pm, is the Just Brass End of Year Concert. So if you're not doing anything at 5pm this Thursday, is that right? Is it this Thursday, Phil? Yeah. Yep. Just had to make sure it was not a thing. Come along and hear what they have to play. And these kids just have a ball and are just amazing. And you'll see the, uh, the talent and the skills of not only them, but the people who come along and support them with what they do which is really cool. Friday night is movie night for the Ladies Connect. Also, um, the Melbourne Staff Band, the 25th of June. There are still plenty of tickets. Um, if you're not one who can uh, book online, you can buy them at the door. Um, but go along and see what they get up to. It's at uh, City Salvos, and um, you can buy tickets at the door if you don't want to jump online and purchase. Uh, this will be the last week for milk donations. Um, the little red bin out there has been overflowing with milk. Um, it's been really good to help those uh, in the doorway space, which has been really good. But that's all I have. Make sure you grab your newsletter on the way out today. So there's more. If you have anything else that is going on or any for more information, please ask. But you'll be now waited on for your offering as uh, Howard plays a wonderful piece on the piano for us.
Shall we pray? <coughs> Loving Father, we want to celebrate your faithfulness. Father, we want to thank you that in all things we can trust in you. And uh, today as we've given so little in comparison to what you have given to us, we want to uh, more than anything celebrate your faithfulness to us. Accept our thanks for all that you give to us day by day for the provision of every need and we ask that as we uh, have given this offering that you will accept it as thanks to you and use it for your honour and glory. Amen. As, you, uh, as I've said, that we're looking at uh, Old Testament heroes. And as we're looking, and me and Belinda were looking at it, there's so many uh, of Old Testament heroes, both what we'd say uh, minor and, and, and quite significant heroes. And as I was trying to find some, uh, some songs this week to fit within the theme, I, I, reminded, well, I found myself having to reread the next song. Um, and I read it as Lord of All Hopelessness. And Lord of all joy. And then went, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Let me, let me reread that. A Lord of all hopefulness and Lord of all joy. And I think it just reminded me that it's easy to talk about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Or I find it easy to find songs along those spots. But we don't sing about uh, these Old Testament heroes in our songbook, but we talk about the themes that go around them, and that's what's going to happen today. And as we delve into the scriptures a bit later and hear from Sue, that you know, there's a moment of hopefulness that comes out of it, and sometimes we can see the other side of it and think it's full of hopelessness. And when we reread it and when we engage into those spaces, we read that. Hang on, if I go back and reread and see what's going on, I find that we have a Lord of all hopefulness and a Lord of all joy, whose trust and ever childlike in our waking gives us, we pray, the bliss of our heart, the Lord at the break of the day. At every moment when we wake, at the break of the day, the, door, the Lord is there waiting for us to see what we're going to get up to, to see whether we're going to follow his path, to see what interactions we're going to have with other, peace, with other people. That is the bliss that we should find in our hearts. Let us stand as we sing verses 1 and 2. Thanks, you band. Read out verse 3 for me. Lord of all kindness, Lord of all grace, your hand quits to speak well to us. Your heart's in grace. Be there for the hungry and give us we pray. Your love in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day. 
Lord of all kindness, Lord of all grace. We talk about that, that we do not deserve God's grace, but he gives it so freely that we are so blessed to have it. Let's sing verse 3 and 4. You guys sound so amazing singing that song. It was awesome. Please take your seats as uh, Elliot's going to come and bring us the kids' time. Elliot, this is not yours. You are not allowed to set it on fire. Hello. Are we, we're on. Fantastic. Yes, last time I did a kids' story, we had fire. So very excited to see the wood this morning. Thanks. See, that's awesome. But today we're going to launch something that hasn't been launched ever before. And it's not a rocket, sorry. Okay, so this is where the kids sort of come up and help me. All right, because today we're going to launch a new program called Courageous Chef. All right, you may have heard the show called Master Chef. Have you heard of Master Chef? Yes, excellent. That's what I have. Professional chefs do some cooking and, and um, teach the other chefs how to make these amazing things. Well, nothing like that's going to happen today. All right, let me just get. I did have an assistant somewhere at the back there, so that's going to help me. Thanks, she's coming. That's all right. Excellent. So, courageous chef. The reason why we call it courageous, not because we're going to do anything really brave this morning. Is this something to do with showing a lot of guts? Um, <clears throat> okay, so, uh, thank you, that'd be great, thank you. All right, so we're going to make a pizza. Now, I don't know what they teach you at school these days, but when I went to school, we learned about the five main food groups. Have you learned that yet? No, well, let me just educate you a little bit this morning. Okay, so they are, you ready? The five main food groups, McDonald's, Hungry Jack's, KFC, <laughs> pizza, and, of course, chocolate. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry chocolate. Okay, so, now, did you listen to the good news this morning? Major Blinn has gone away for a conference, so poor Captain David and Joshua will be having the five main food groups this week, I'm sure, for their cooking. So, yes, I'll save you the pizza. You'll love it. Okay, so, we got, have you ever made a pizza before? Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Okay, well, this is, I've got a few ingredients, all right? Now, so it's a little bit different this morning, okay? Now... We're going to start off with some um, cheesels. Now, um, when, when you put the cheesels, don't eat the cheesels because if the hole there gives you wind, apparently. So, do you want to put some cheesels on the pizza for me, Matty? Excellent. So, wax it on, on our lovely pizza here. Excellent. Uh, do we need to... <laughs> Can we whack, whack it in for later? I'll eat that during the band message. Don't tell me about it. Okay. All right. Okay. So, got lots of lovely cheesels in the place. Very, looking very nice. Now, the other thing, where's Mr. Greg? Oh, Mr. Greg's up the back there. Now, Mr. Greg is a very accomplished fisherman. He catches fish, so he might know which fish has fingers. So I've got a fish <laughs> finger this morning. Now, I like fish fingers, so would you like to put a fish finger on it? No, would you like to put a fish finger on a thing? You have, well, you're very brave. Oh, that's on. Oh, fantastic. It's a, it's a live fish, yes. Excellent. Well, good. All right, uh, now... Okay, time for some healthy stuff. This is called broccoli. 
So you, you hold the broccoli, you put the broccoli on. Okay. Now, broccoli in my house when I grew up as a little boy, which was just a couple of weeks ago, was called the missionary food, broccoli. Because when my mum and dad served broccoli, none of us kids would eat it, you see. And my dad would always say, I'm sure other parents would say, there's kids in Africa starving. And my big brother taught me to say, maybe we could post it over there. So that became <laughs> the missionary food. All right, so it's very healthy broccoli, looking good. Now, corn chips. Now, the pressure's on, Maddie. You dropped a cheese the last time, so here's the corn chips. So they looking good. I tell you, it's looking fat. Are you hungry? I'm starving. This is great. All right, now, who has Vegemite on their breakfast? Not me. Not me. No, not Vegemite. Okay, well, come over here. You can help me with my Vegemite. You can hold that, and you can hold a knife. Can you hold a knife? And spread some Vegemite on our... Because Vegemite's very healthy. Come on, you can do it. Not chocolate, it's Vegemite. You smell it. You smell it. Come here. Okay. Oh, drop me. Okay. All right, here we go. Alright, have some veggie right over here. Stick my cheese in that. Lovely. Fish finger in that. And got to make the broccoli taste not like broccoli. Excellent. Now, now when I have an injection at work or my flu shot or my other things I have to have at work, I get a lollipop. So I thought we'd have a lollipop, because lollipop's good. So do you want to put, do you want to put I'm take the wrapper? Could my assistant please unwrap that? But excellent. We'll put that on in a minute. All right. Uh, what do we have left? Tiny teddies. Now, they're, of course, they're the healthy... Co- oh, fantastic. <laughs> you can cook at my place any time you like. Fantastic. That's going really well. Excellent. What, is my lollipop ready yet? Who wants to do the lollipop? Caden, you can do the lollipop, please. Whack it on our pizza. Yeah, on a pizza. On a pizza. Oh, fantastic. Excellent. Uh, thank you. All right, so we've got one left, Maddie. Can you do the egg? Now, maybe not do that like the cheesels. Hang on, hang on a sec. Hang on. Okay, you can whack the egg on there now. Perfect. You're going to crack it? Let's crack it first. Hang on. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Excellent. Oh, fantastic. Yep, nice. Yum O. And we've got a wipe for All right, so how, how's my pizza looking? Would you eat this pizza? No one would. No one would. Oh. Well, it's funny you should say that. My pizza is a little bit out of order. We forgot something else, though. One thing to go. What have we forgotten? What do we normally put on the pizza first? Ah, oh, tomato sauce. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, see how this Dave's doing the sauce. All right. Who wants to help with the sauce? Sauce. Oh, look at this. Can I do the sauce? Is that okay? There we go. Lamo. You got it? Are you going to do the sauce? Yeah, Excellent. All right. Do you want to wipe your hands? I need to wipe my hands. Do you want my hands? You don't want to shoot at that person. Mum does the washing, that's all right. Okay, all right, so I've got things still wrong. It is, it is wrong, isn't it? I've got things out of order. Tomato should have gone first, yeah? Well, some of these things you would never put on a pizza, would you? They're nice to eat separately, but not on a pizza, though, is it? Yeah. I've got it all out of order. And funny enough, I've got some things written on the back of my ingredients. What's that word? Work. Work. Sometimes... We do so much work, we don't leave time for God. What about this? I get the vegetable off my fingers. What does that say? Can you read my bad writing? All about me. All about me. How awesome is that? That's great, all about me. I could talk all about me for a long time, but it's not right, is it? I don't, I don't need to put God first, don't I? All right. What about this one? Can you read this one? Well, money. Well done. Thank you. Money. All right. So sometimes we get so focused with money, don't we? We forget about the important things, don't we? We've got to buy the latest Nintendo or the latest Nintendo game or PlayStation or those other things called the internet or something. I'm not really sure because I'm old. But I know it's how you walked away from the pizza. A bit nervous. Okay. So this, like my pizza, is mixed up. 
sometimes we get mixed up because we don't put God first, do we? So we need to put God first. Just like we need to put tomato on the base first. So we give it a good base, don't we? We need to put God first. And in the Bible, it tells us about, somebody asked a question to Jesus about what is the greatest commandment, what's the greatest thing to do? And Jesus said this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. So everything, isn't it? Love God with everything. And the second is, love one another. So we need to be nice to each other as well, don't we? Sometimes that's hard, isn't it? All right? Just like this pizza's a little bit awful. Sometimes loving each other is difficult, all right? But God wants you to love him first and love one another, all right? So afterwards, we can all share... The, oh, no, hang on. Afterwards, see me because I have some chocolate frogs, all right? which will taste a lot better than this. And if you want this pizza, the band's got a rehearsal this afternoon at one o'clock, so we'll be sharing the pizza beforehand. <laughs> and then all go home early with food poisoning. All right. Okay, so back to our chairs. What's next? Uh, it is, oh, the band message. Fantastic. Excellent.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, what we heard through our children's story. And Lord, what it is to uh, be able to seek you out. And Lord, we can be standing next to you and may not see you, but Lord, you show us your nails in your hand and we know that you are with us all the time, everywhere, through every situation. Lord, I pray for our scriptures as they get opened and read to us today. And I pray for the message that Major Sue is going to bring to us as we unpack some of your Old Testament heroes that we find and look up to and get guidance from. Allow that to be shown for us today and allow that to become more of our understanding of your nature and your being as we come closer and closer to you. Amen. Bible reading today is taken from Genesis 22 verses 1 to 14 and it's entitled Abraham Tested. Sometime later God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love and go to the region of Morah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, father, Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide, and to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Amen. Thank you, Ross, for that reading. Let's just take a moment and think back to the first time you can remember hearing that story. When would you have first heard that story? <laughs> exactly. Sunday school. A long time ago. What were they teaching us in Sunday school? Let's just think about that. What a horrific story, okay, to tell to a group of children. We were either very brave, we were either very brave or very ridiculous. 
What were we thinking? I've got no words. What were we thinking? Here's the primitive story of a man who was reluctant yet willing to offer up a human sacrifice to his God. Not any human, but the precious son as the unsuspecting victim. We learnt, many of us, this story in Sunday school. Abraham takes Isaac up the mountain. He's bound and he's on the altar that they had both built. It's not like you'd read it as a bedtime story, is it? No. So if any of you were thinking of doing that with your grandchildren or your children, don't do it. Not at night time. This story raises for us so many questions, intellectually, emotionally, and you are not alone if you have questions about this passage. Here's just a few of mine, and I could have gone on writing for quite some time. Firstly, did Abraham tell Sarah what God had asked? Well, if he did, he had more, you know what, than all of us put together. What kind of anguish and despair must Abraham have felt on a three-day journey? Because the Bible says it took them three days to get to the place. What kind of nerve-wracking experience must that have been for Abraham? He would not have slept for many hours. Didn't Isaac then, all the servants, notice that there was something wrong with him? Like, was he not visibly distressed? That's another question. Another question I have is, why didn't Isaac physically overpower his father when it came to the binding? Now... Isaac is not a toddler in this story because the Bible tells us that from verse 6, Isaac is the one carrying the large pile of wood up the mountain. Abraham carried the fire and the knife. Surely, surely, my brain asks me, would, that, would a small child been able to carry up the wood Enough wood to light the fire. I don't know, I don't know how about you, but if you've ever thought of sort of these questions, it makes me a little bit, what's actually going on here? So Isaac wasn't a small child and Abraham was an elderly man. He could have taken him out. Surely he could have taken him out. And yet, the word of God says, he bound Abraham and laid him on the altar. And again, I ask myself, what word of God should Abraham have taken notice of? Should Abraham have taken notice of the one where God promised he would become the father of many, many nations through this child? Or or should Abraham have taken more notice of the one where God asks this bizarre request of him? Which word of God should he take notice of at this point? So many questions. So few answers. But putting it simply, would a loving God ask a man to kill the child that was promised by that same God as a means of proving his faith? And if so... Why? Why? Now, these questions troubled the early Christians as well, so we're not alone in that. And one such person was a fellow called Marcion. Now, I think we've got his little uh, on the screen. He was the son... Oh, no, that's not it. (laughs) No, that's not it. Um, Doesn't matter. We'll go on. One at the top, there he is there, he sees someone's painted him, he's sitting writing. So Marcion was the son of a bishop. Now he went to Rome and he taught that the God of the Old Testament was a fickle, cruel being. 
who had nothing to do with the true God of Jesus. He formed a powerful sect and only permitted a Bible made up of the Gospel of Luke and 10 epistles of St. Paul. So it was very tiny. So naturally, the views that he expressed were strenuously rejected by the main body of Christianity. And his own father, the Bishop of Sinope, excommunicated his son, Marcion, which no doubt confirmed Marcion's opinion of the God, bad God of the Old Testament. But this story reminds us that we're not alone when we have reservations about some of the biblical passages that we read. Because some passages are simply offensive to our senses. And I, this one is to mine. And they are the very senses that God has created us with. So you are looking at some heroes of the Old Testament here at Ingle Farm. And we can all agree, I think, those who, of us who know a little about Abraham, is that he is a hero of the faith. He's mentioned in the passage from Hebrews 11, where it lists the Hebrews of the faith. Now faith, now by faith, Moses, now by faith, Abraham. And in fact, verse 17 from chapter 11 of Hebrews and the verses after say, By faith Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. How did he decide? How did he decide that he would be obedient to God's ask to give up his child? Okay. We're going to do a little bit of a poll this morning. And I want you to think... Oh, I've left the mic down there, Pete, but you can turn that on and use it. Um, what is something you would find terribly, terribly, terribly hard to give up? Doesn't have to be, it's, it doesn't have to be anything major, but what would be really difficult for you to give up today? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. We've used that a bit, yes. Anyone else? An electric blanket? Peanut butter. A peanut butter. butter. On toast. On to I have a fire down here, Major. If Did you bring it this morning? No, you didn't? Who else? Anyone? Coffee. Ah, coffee. Yes, coffee. Okay. Um... If you could run that microphone over to the bandmaster, that'd be great for me. Yes, I know his role is, I knew it was coming. You know what? You knew it was coming. Now, David. Sue. <laughs> oh, please stand so we can all see you. Um, we're not far away from August. Um, I know Belinda's not here, but I'm wondering if the band's people would actually like, would, could they give up their rehearsals for the month of August? To, um, to replace it with something else. How, how do you think that would go? What would be your response? Pizza night. <laughs> Pizza night. Look, I think that the band would be working really hard in July, so August we wouldn't need to. Oh. <laughs> okay. Good answer. Give him a round of applause for that diplomatic answer. Well, I've, I have done that once at a previous core, and I said, said to the band master, really like you to give up rehearsals for August and he said why he said because I think I'd like to give the men and the women of the band a night where they could actually connect with their family connect with God spend time in prayer and they said yes they gave up something that was actually quite precious because it's not just about the music, is it? It's about the connection that you have with each other. It's about the camaraderie. And replace that with something that perhaps was not as easily fitted in to their week. 
And you're right, God blessed their ministry, their musical ministry, and no one could tell that they hadn't been spending that time together. And I don't know, maybe they did work extra hard in July. I don't know, I wasn't worried about that. But, you know, sometimes there's a point where God says, actually, slow down and put me first. Slow down and put me first. We don't know a lot about Abraham, I think, but we know that it was with him that God made a significant covenant. And I've got one of these really uh, cool Bibles at home, which is um, sort of like diagrams and pictures. And it's really, because I'm great, I'm great with, I'm not so great with words, right? So here is, from the infographic Bible, some text. The question is, what is a covenant? And a covenant, a gracious declaration and promise to Abraham and to his descendants and the generations to come. A relational promise that will bring flourishing and wholeness in life, centred around God. This is taken over into the New Testament by the church that becomes the children of Abraham. And the goal is to create a people that passionately entrust their lives, are bound up in God and are fulfilled by Jesus Christ to bring people of all nations into God's blessing. That word for me really stood out. They are bound up in God. Because of the covenant God made with Abraham, for Abraham, God came first. There were no conditions There was no fine print to read, no exceptions. The wisdom of this story is simple and profound. And that is that sacrifice is built into anything that finally matters. And the question for us today, as the people of God, as we gather, is, is our faith and love anywhere near that level? And if it is not, then let us just be humble in the presence of the story of Abraham. Let's just sit there quietly at the the foot of this story and wonder and learn from him. Now, in a different setting, Jesus takes up the same challenge with his disciples. And he says this, He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And here again, we have the words of Jesus that conjure up so many questions for us. What does that really mean? The only answer I can come to is for Jesus, God comes first. Sacrifice is built into anything that finally matters. The lessons of giving up to gain is a difficult one because we ask ourselves, why should I have to give up in order to gain? Because God gave up all for us in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, who he placed on a cross. And he did not substitute his son for another thing Or another one. Why should I have to give up in order to gain? Because I hold on so tightly to some of those things that I deem good. When it might just be that God has greater things for me that I don't know yet, that I don't yet know about. We hold on to what we believed are the dearest and best, but God may have something more for us. 
You see, even Jesus wanted another way. Take this cup from me, he said, but not my will, but yours. This obedience demonstrated in that story of Jesus and in the ancient story from the Old Testament is what Jesus requires of me. It is not optional because I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. So today as we prepare for prayer, let's use the question, what do I hold on to that God would have me give up for no other reason that there is something better? What do I hold on to that God would have me give up for no other reason that there is something better for me and for you? Yes, we do have a bit of an altar down here this morning. And the other thing that we do have is just some blank pieces of red and orange paper. If you wish, you can just come forward and take a scrap of paper and screw it up into a ball. I might get you to demonstrate, Pete. And place it on the altar. And you can write on it if you want. If you want to write something that you've been struggling with, if you want to hand over a situation to God, if you want to place a person and place that person in amongst the fire of the Holy Spirit, which we do now, we do now. This is a time for you to do that. Your blank piece of screwed up paper can become a prayer. Those words that you might like to write in it can become a prayer. And if you're not able to bring your words to the front, I'm sure someone can bring them for you. So let's just play some music as we just take some time to place what we need to place on God's altar this morning. i 
presence daily live. All to Jesus I surrender. Lord, I give myself to Let thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, as we've heard what your servant has said today and the stories of Abraham and the ability for him to show you so much love that he was willing to sacrifice his only son for you. His love was so deep, so passionate, so willing to serve you. Lord, as these symbols of rolled up bits of paper have been put on this altar just like Abraham did with the ram allow these things to be given over to you to be handed over to you as a sacrifice as an offering to hand them over to let you deal with them to allow those to be lifted off us to allow that sense of willingness to serve you unconditionally And Lord, we know that we receive from you the most amazing gift, that you show us grace and love and understanding. But best of all, you give us redemption through your Son and your Holy Spirit to us to not only guide us but to build us up, to encourage us, to strengthen us so that we may be servants to you And we may be able to share the story of Abraham and Isaac in the way that makes sense, in the way that goes forward, that others may understand and come to know your grace and your love. So Lord, thank you for what you give to us. Accept what has been given to you and allow that to be used and to be done in whichever way is needed. We pray these things in your wonderful name. Amen. And so we leave here this morning knowing and understanding that there's so much we don't understand. But God requires us by faith to believe that he knows best and the way with him is solid and sure. I hope that's your experience this morning. I'm going to sing our final song. Words will be on the screen. And would you like to stand As we do, I think they're coming. There they are. Keep on believing is the song we'll finish this morning's meeting with. Thanks, David.
let's read verse 3 together before we sing verse 4. God is your wisdom. God is your might. God's ever near you, guiding awry. He understands you, knows all you need. Trusting in him, you surely. Verse 4 together. Let us press on and never despair. Live above feeling victories there. Jesus can keep us only to him. That never more our face shall grow dear. This morning we're going to share a benediction together which will be on the screen. So together, I believe in the God of Abraham and Jesus, of sinner and saint, doubter and believer. I believe in the God who does not require costly offerings but love, loyalty and truth. I believe in the God who loves our dear ones better than we can ever love them, yet asks us to put them second so that we may better love them. I believe in the God of love, mercy and peace, whom to serve is perfect freedom. I believe that what I believe today is only a fraction of the glory that is to come. Amen. God bless you each. Thank you. 